Pollock are a member of the Cod family. They're very important to recreational fishing. Some of the charter boats in this area, it makes up about 70% of their business. I've been fishing for Pollock for over 30 years and particularly over the last six to seven years we've seen a very marked decrease in the size of the fish and the volume of the fish that comes in with each season. They're also of increasing importance to the commercial fisheries due to the decline in cod stocks. And yet there's just so little data on the species, so we're here to collect some really fundamental data, but some really also exciting data on where they go and when, and um, try and understand which habitats we need to protect and when. Pollock FISP is a fisheries industry science partnership which is funded through the DEFRA FISP scheme and it's a real collaboration between uh, researchers at the University of Plymouth, the University of York, the Marine Biological Association and the Professional Boatmen's Association and the Angling Trust and across all of these organisations we're really collecting quite fundamental information about how many pollock are out there, how, how big they're growing um, and then also the uh, tracking element of the project is looking at how they're moving, what habitats they're using. Today we're working about 15 miles off Plymouth um, and we're going to be catching Pollock on some wrecks. Yeah, there's fish marking guys. Let's be having you. Fish on. So one of our main tools is acoustic telemetry um, and that's really just a method of tracking an animal underwater and that relies on two main bits of equipment. So you have an acoustic transmitter tag which we put inside the fish and that transmits uh, a unique signal for a period of around four years. And that fish is just basically constantly pinging a signal. And when that fish swims by one of our acoustic receivers, that receiver will log the time and date. And by building up a network of these receivers across different areas, we can then sort of pinpoint where these fish are moving, when they're moving there. And we've now got a system of receivers which spans most of the English Channel. And we hope with that we can track these sort of long range movements, long range migration patterns of this animal. One of the main things we're trying to find out with Pollock FISP is just how far do these Pollock move? And do, do you basically have these localised populations or do you have fish that move from Plymouth all the way up to Sussex and back. It's a really good way of trying to figure out how uh, targeted your management should be. So do you need to manage Pollock off Plymouth in a specific way or can you just say everything across the English Channel is one thing and you, and you can do a one-size-fits-all approach to all those kind of fish. As well as understanding how fish move, it's also essential to understand the basic biology of Pollock. At the moment I'm working with 13 charter boats. They are collecting length records, but many of them are also sexing the fish, and some of them are even providing an idea of what these fish have been eating. We also like to get information about how old these fish are, and in order to do that, we actually collect the ear bones. And a bit like uh, the rings on the trees, you can actually tell how old a fish is by the number of rings. We're also trying to find out about how fish stocks have varied over time. So what we're actually looking at is log books from skippers that date back to the 1980s, and also we're looking at records from angling clubs, which are a massive source of information. Dr. Bryce Stewart and myself are also interviewing fishermen from a multitude of backgrounds, trying to understand through their experience how the fishery is and how it works. And they're really trying to get to the grips of like what people actually think is the problem and what's causing it, and then what could be done to help remedy that. It's been uh, an amazing experience to bring the science together with the boats. Recreational fishers and commercial fishers working together is the only way that you're going to get the best quality data. It helps open your eyes to other perceptions and other people's ways of doing things. We literally, we couldn't do this without them. And I think a lot of people are excited to learn more about these fish, safeguard the future of the fish stocks and the future of angling. And we just need the best data to make the best decisions. 